Dacia's Jogger aims to blend the sensible virtues of an estate car with the usefulness of a compact seven-seat MPV and the style of an SUV. All at affordable pricing that will see you doing a double take. It gets modern engineering tech too. The engine we're trying in this car is the one litre three-cylinder TCE Renault petrol unit that Dacia seems to want to fit to almost everything it makes. We think a diesel would also work well with the kind of model this is, but there's no sign of that. What the Jogger will get is the interesting 1.6 litre, 145 horsepower, full hybrid petrol engine currently fitted to the Renault Clio and Catcher, which wasn't available at the time of this test, but might well be by the time you come to view this film. This can run up to 80% of its time on electricity in urban driving. We think this one litre turbo unit though is probably all you really need, offering 109 horsepower and reasonably eager performance as long as you can keep its little turbo spinning in the engine's sweet spot. Rest to 62 miles an hour takes 11.2 seconds, but that stat's not particularly relevant because entirely appropriately this engine's been tuned here more for mid-range pulling power than the traffic light Grand Prix. Here's a more telling set of figures, 200 newton metres of torque, enough to haul along 600 kilos of onboard passengers and cargo at the same time as towing a 1200 kilo braked trailer. If your carriage needs are greater than that, by all means find twice the price required for a jogger, up your running costs and go for a mid-sized 7 seat SUV instead. In town, the light electric steering, the Dacia's simple suspension systems, ample reserves of wheel travel over bumps and the glassy cabin make progress easy. Plus, there's an eco button to focus the little TCE engine on frugality. Use it proactively and you should get somewhere near the one litre engine's claimed efficiency stats, up to 49.6 mpg on the combined cycle and 132 grams per kilometre of CO2. The jogger doesn't fall apart when you reach the twisty stuff either. True, there's not that much grip or steering feedback, but the damping rates are well enough chosen to stop the car unduly rolling about through faster tight turns. Cruising refinement could be better, but it's not that far away from class standards. Finally, despite the car's SUV-style visual vibe, there's no real off-roading prowess, but with 200 millimetres of ground clearance, rougher tracks won't be as awkward as they would be with a conventional family estate, or most small SUVs come to that. So what exactly is this? Part station wagon, part crossover, part SUV, part MPV, take your pick. What the jogger doesn't have is Dacia's usual whiff of budget brand about it. And it's all a world away from the stripped out Eastern European vibe of the dispiriting Logan MCV estate this car replaced. This is easily the longest model the Romanian company makes, measuring four and a half metres in length, thanks to the 30 centimetre wheelbase increase it enjoys over its Sandero hatch stablemate. You'll spot the visual SUV vibe here, 200 millimetres of ground clearance, modular roof bars and black wheel arch cladding see to that. And disguise the fact that from the B pillar forwards, everything is pretty much the same as a Sandero. There is though a 40 millimeter step up at the rear to offer the additional height and width needed for the extra seating row. So a smart look outside, but what about the cabin? Well, our comfort models keyless entry system has automatically unlocked the door for us. So let's take a look inside. At the wheel, given the money being asked here, you might expect all the interior charm of a Bulgarian thrift store. Actually, though, what's served up by this jogger is surprisingly welcoming, thanks to quite a pleasing combination of materials and contemporary-looking dials and controls. Take, for instance, the way that this interior is lifted by this cross-hatched fabric trim across the centre of the dash and on the door armrests. Knurl silver trimming decorates the gear stick, and if you avoid base trim, you also get automatic air conditioning with these three smart silver bezel dials. Also added from comfort level upwards is this soft feel stitched leather steering wheel, along with a satin chrome finish for the door catches and these oblong vents. 
Only the unpleasantly shiny grained dash top finish gives the budget brand game away. Another advantage of avoiding base trim is that you get this 8-inch media display screen with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto smartphone integration. Thanks to the raised ride height we mentioned earlier, you sit a fraction higher than the family hatch norm and looking forwards, the instruments are simple. There's a pair of traditional dials for revs and speed, which are quite elegant, plus a central display that gives you a choice of vehicle and data options you can scroll through using the these buttons on the steering wheel. It's a practical cabin too, with 24 litres of stowage space on offer. Right, let's take a look at the middle row. Even tall, lanky folk can fit in quite easily, and there's plenty of space for feet to slide underneath the bottom of the front seats. Unfortunately, the rear bench back here can't slide or recline as it would in an MPV, nor does it have an armrest, but it is sculpted so that a middle occupant can sit in reasonable comfort. What about the third row? Well, to access it, you pull on this seat shoulder tie, then lift the light seat base forward, freeing up a surprisingly wide aperture for entry to the very rearmost part of the car, Granny should certainly be able to manage this on her Sunday afternoon jaunt to the garden centre. Once you're ensconced in the third row, there are more surprises. No, as an adult, you wouldn't want to be relegated back here for really long trips, but you could just about cope with a medium length jaunt in this part of the car if you had to. The 127 mm knee room figure is also better than you get in a mid-sized seven-seat SUV like a Skoda Kodiak or a Land Rover Discovery Sport. Finally, let's take a look at the boot. Now, lift the light tailgate and with all three seating rows in place, capacity is predictably limited, though 213 litres should still be enough for a quick supermarket visit. Dacia decided to make these third row chairs of the removable sort. To remove the seats at 10 kilos each, they're actually quite light, there's a red pull tie on the right side of each chair base, tugging on which angles the whole seat forward. Then you simply unclip it at the front and take the thing out. But you're not going to want to do that all that often. More usually, you'll be pushing on these outermost red tabs, which folds the backrest forward onto its squab, though not quite flat. As usual with seven-seaters, there are various seat-folding permutations. Dacia says up to 60 of them in this case, though we're not quite sure how they arrived at that figure. Anyway, folding the third row backrests forward frees up a useful 712 litres of space measured to the top of the backrest. If you were then to go on and fold the second row seats as well, you have up to 1,819 litres of space to play with. Usually, when a car tries to be all things to all people, it ends up being a compromised confection. Yet we can imagine a jogger suiting someone just fine who wanted a family estate, or an MPV, or an SUV. There's everything you need here and nothing you don't. Dacia's usual mantra, but this time delivers from a product with a little more polish. In summary, the jogger is in many ways just about everything a modern, affordable family station wagon ought to be. And if that's not enough of a recommendation for you, we're not quite sure what is. <laughs>